Tracy Grimshaw, welcome to A Current Affair. It can be highly addictive and it's taken by millions, a painkiller that's readily prescribed by doctors around the country. But as you're about to see in our investigation, there's a sinister side to this drug. I feel as though I failed my daughter. This is a very dangerous drug. It's a very dangerous drug. This drug, Lyrica, is like Santa Claus in a pill. If I knew then what I know now, I never, ever would have taken this drug. When we experience pain, we often look for a quick fix pill to try and take it away. Most recently, for many Australians, that pill has been Lyrica. For patients, it's cheap, it's accessible, and millions of scripts are written every year. It's been a blockbuster drug for Pfizer, who's made hundreds of millions of dollars from Aussies using the painkiller. Now everyone's gonna know my dirty little secret. It's taken great courage for Kristala Andreas to share her story. I can't go on like this. Sorry. So you suffer in silence, and when you're thinking on a day, I can't do this anymore. I don't wanna grow old like this. Kristala suffered severe spinal injuries in a car accident in 2017. She was prescribed Lyrica to manage her chronic pain. I trusted the doctors. I trusted what they said to me. Now, the 52-year-old wishes she'd never taken that first pill. A finance broker, Chris is embarrassed to admit she was outsmarted by a simple painkiller. You take it at first and you don't really notice um, very many differences. And you go back to the doctor and say, I'm still in pain, I'm still not feeling well, I've still got nerve pain. I said, well, up the dosage. And you up, 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 up. And before you knew it, I was taking 450 milligrams a day. And that's when this drug gets its claws into your soul. It's taken her two years just to reduce the dosage. But Chris still can't go cold turkey. It is taken every ounce, every fibre of my being to try and come off it. Gail Wilson's 33-year-old daughter, Anita, was full of fun. In 2017, after getting her wisdom teeth out, Anita was prescribed strong painkillers. And she would then say, I have got period pain. I'll go to and get some Panadine Fort. I'll get more Endone. And she doctor shocked. In no time, Anita's life became one big sedation. She would take a deadly combination of opioids and Lyrica. He gave her exactly what she wanted because of her addiction, as many tablets as she could possibly get, and he, he gave it to her. Feeling helpless, Gail started to record Anita. She hoped it would shock some sense into her. Lyrica one, at one stage was 350 milligrams four times a day. So I, I'll ring up and make an appointment to see a doctor. And when I went in, I said, I'm here about my daughter, your patient. And I said, she's asleep all the time. And I said, it, and, it, and he said, well, she's going, she's going to die if she keeps doing that. And I said, I realise that. But what can you do? No one could save Anita. She overdosed last year. I feel as though I failed her. I, I couldn't find anything else to do to keep her alive. Lyrica, also known as pregabalin, was originally prescribed to treat epilepsy and nerve pain. Manufactured by Pfizer, it was added to Australia's pharmaceutical benefit scheme in 2013. Right away, Pfizer launched a marketing blitz. $3.8 million was thrown into almost 500 education events to teach Aussie GPs about the drug. That investment paid dividends. Pregabalin scripts skyrocketed from 36,000 a year in 2012 to more than 4 million by 2018. And research tells us 50% of those prescriptions are now handed out for much more than nerve pain. You're in so much pain. I nearly ended up in the hospital. I started to forget things. These people have all had a battle with Lyrica. Over the years, my brain just went to mush. I did want to end my life coming off it. Mm. Um, and 
Jeez, that's a bit touchy to talk about. Um, Many feel like they were dismissed when they asked for help. The addiction gets worse. Today, psychiatrist Dr. Tanvir Ahmed is here to listen. I've seen more and more patients who talk of the suicidal thoughts, and some studies have also shown that. What warnings come with this drug? Vicky? There was absolutely no warning about any potential side effects. Um, and I wasn't made aware of any potential side effects. Can I have a look at Brianna is 27. She's addicted to Lyrica. I have lost six to seven years of my life on this drug, and it's stolen my life. I've never, I've never been the same again. I can't get off it. Eliza says her Lyrica pain started when she was 18. Then all of a sudden, my mental health went downhill. It just made my mind dark. And it was a horrible, horrible feeling. It sucks the life out of you. It does. It really does. The day is in bed, the, the not wanting to breathe, mm. the fact that all joy is sucked out of you, um, but you keep going because you've got a family to look after. But I think that's the other thing is that it doesn't discriminate, you know? You guys are just normal, everyday working people completely debilitated by this. Like my doctor actually said, that if your withdrawals are what a heroin addict will go through, you're experiencing exactly what a heroin oh, addict is. Not like, and the withdrawals are freaking horrendous. The sweating, the I can't talk properly. I'm sitting here with my mother and I can't even have a conversation with her. Well, Rihanna, you just gave an absolutely perfect description of the drug's addictive potential, but you also described how it gets worse. I guess an answer to the pain management, Rihanna, is you need what's called a multidisciplinary team and then that needs to be appropriately resourced by authorities i guess it's that, that that holistic you know team support well, is that readily available well that's people what we're saying out there, well like? rihanna's been referred and she's waiting so often it's really hard to access particularly in outer metropolitan and regional areas and that's actually where we see the worst uh problems with drugs like lyrica but they would all agree that getting proper help is expensive. Yeah, I actually had to stop seeing my psychologist because I couldn't afford it anymore. You can't get public help. <laughs> yeah. Just that private. What's happened in Australia is other types of pain medication have been restricted, and arguably for some good reasons, like codeine, opiates, and I think that's why Lyrica has taken the space. Pfizer was part of a... Amy started the Lyrica Survivor Group. She explains, in the US, Pfizer has been prosecuted over its marketing of Lyrica. Pfizer has paid some of the largest fines in the industry. They agreed to pay $2.3 billion for healthcare fraud settlements. They were illegally marketing four different drugs, and Lyrica fell under that umbrella. One criminal count stemming from the improper promotion. And is it, is it a case that these big pharma companies go, we'll cop the fine, because what we make of it, make from it, is worth it. I would say that's very accurate, and I could see that um, indicative of the numbers that you just quoted in Australia. I mean, the amount of prescriptions has exploded. When we approached Pfizer, we received a one-sentence response saying it no longer owns Lyrica. We were directed to a company called Beatrice. It was created late last year when a division of Pfizer merged with another pharmaceutical firm. Despite Pfizer trying to distance itself from Lyrica, its branding is still plastered all over the box and even the pills. Saeed Kadari is a pharmacist. In the last three years, the number of Lyrica scripts he's filled has more than doubled. We went on just over 6,000 prescriptions uh, in total across all the streets, across all our stores, to just over 13,000. Anyone on a healthcare card or a pension card can pick it up for, you know, six dollars. Mr. Kadari says he's well seasoned at spotting doctor shoppers. They uh, try to come up with lots of excuses. Sometimes they're sweating, they're nervous, they're a bit anxious sometimes. What's your warning? For Victoria is the only state which has mandatory monitoring for Lyrica prescriptions. There's no way for us to really monitor exactly if they're getting prescriptions elsewhere. In certain instances, it would really help us a lot. And doctors too. We as a medical community, but also the broader community, didn't think it was addictive, didn't think it was that dangerous. We now get taught that if you give someone Lyrica, almost expect them to take double the amount you've given them. When does Lyrica
America becomes so much of a problem that you that the regulators will step in? At what point does it have to get to? Well, I think we're getting pretty close to it now. And, you know, we see from the response here that I think we're very close to it. Where does this end? I can't see light at the end of the tunnel. I really can't. Be careful. Just be careful. Brave people for talking. And if you or someone you know needs help, there's support available. Contact Lifeline. The number is on your screen now, 131114. That's 131114.